EPA or endpoint adjustment is a function inside our radios that we use to determine the maximum throw of our servos or our throttle channel. Now, most of us are used to using EPA in no prep drag to kind of limit how far our actual steering can go left or right. But there's amazing tuning feature in EPA that we can actually use to go faster. So that's exactly what I'm going to show you what to do today. My name is Chad. This is the Dorky and 40 RC channel. We're going to make you faster today. Thank you everybody for stopping by the channel today. Hopefully you guys get something good out of this. If so, don't forget to hit the like button if share it. If you'd like to leave a comment, if you have something else to add to this, or you have a better thing for the audience to try. You can also donate to the channel if you feel that you've gotten something out of this or use one of the Amazon links below. So if we take a look here at the Sanwa M17, and I'm sure that you can actually do this with a lot of other radios, but it might not be specific enough as the M17 is because there's a few little tricks that you all know that the M17 has. So the first thing I want to refresh you on is the actual ramp speed. So this ramp speed is basically how fast it takes the actual throttle channel to go from zero to 100. And if we look at these different ramp speeds, these are starting from zero. So I usually run at at a negative 96. I've toyed with negative 95 and negative 94. They work sometimes, sometimes they don't. But if we look at that chart, you can see that as you go from one to the next, there is some shorter and some larger jumps. For example, if we go from a 96 to a 95, we're looking at a 0.23 second faster jump as compared to going from a 95 to a 94. It's basically less than a second. So it's a pretty big aggressive jump. That's like throwing in a lot of timing into the first stage of your car. And we know that like timing will generate heat. It will sometimes slow your car down because it can be unpredictable how it's applied. In most speed controllers, we really don't know like when and how it applies that timing, whether it's linearly or not. But this radio and that setting right there is something that we can depend on. Now, if we actually change the point function, and we'll show you what that is here just by going into my custom menu. So if you're familiar with the M17 and everything else, Mark Vine's videos, we all should know about the point. And you can see I have my point here as 17. So in a perfect world, what's going to happen is I'm going to pull my trigger. It's immediately going to jump to 17, and then it's going to ramp the rest of this 100% dual rate in at a ramp speed of minus 96. So if we refresh ourselves, a minus 96 will take 1.26 seconds. So I'm starting at 17, not zero. So you can just kind of determine how fast you think it's ramping in. 1.1, 1 1.05, who really knows? But the whole point behind this is that there is a way to get that speed from going from the negative 96 to negative 95 without making it so crazy and so abrupt. And that is the actual base EPA function. And we'll show you that here on the Sanwa. You can see that I have it all the way down here at the bottom in my custom menu list as one of the options. And I have mine turned up to 107. So basically I'm ramping in at a negative 96 from a 17 point, And then we are going at a 107. And the 107 number it's kind of a weird number. You could think about it in time. You could think about it in percentage, however you want to. But really, it's just doing all that faster. And uh, the best way to do it is just to show you an example of everything here. So if we go down to the EPA setting, and let's just turn this all the way down to 50. And I'll show you here on the Sanwa exactly what I'm talking about. They clearly demonstrate this, uh, you know, very good. So the Sanwa servo monitor has a range that is divided in 50s. So you have 0, 50, 100, and 150. So as I pull the trigger here, you're going to see now that it's only going to ramp over to 50. And it's doing it very, very, very slowly. So that's a good example of there of what we're trying to do. Now, if we go ahead and change that to 100, 
Now we're going to pull the trigger and you'll see that it's going to ramp all the way over to the little dash, which is 100. Now is where the fun starts. So you saw that mine was actually set to 107, but we can actually go to 150. Now, if you could go to 150, I'm pretty sure that you can land a faster ramp. So it's not the whole point. This is for demonstration purposes only. So now watch that throttle channel. It's going to ramp all the way over. And it also is going to do this a lot faster. So it, it's very, very cool how it actually works. And a lot of the guys are doing this out there, a lot of the pro guys and stuff, because it's nice to have your tune and everything set up and literally you can make a change in the radio. You know, that's the one thing that's great about the Sanwa. You can change your point, you can change this, you can change that. But that ramp time right there, that is just free time. Again, you know, we're not adding timing. We're not putting an extra load on the ESC or the battery. I mean, of course, we're going to make RPMs in a different way, but we're just not like hurting our battery like we typically would when we were using this EPA function. So I like to basically just kind of move mine up like five to 10 at a time and then kind of like fine tune it been working on this for like a week worked very well last night at the race where i went to the finals i think my best time that i ran last night was a 1736 so that was pretty good so i usually would start my epa you know start around 105 and like a ramp of 96 and see how that all works for you. And then of course, as you can put and lay down more time, you're gonna be good, so. So I think that about covers it. The ultimate goal is to lower your ramp speed as much as your car will take, as comfortable as the surface will take. But having this EPA range, cramming that extra percentage into a calibrated ESC, you are going to be able to actually increase that speed and get closer to that 95 or that 93, those big jumps without making those huge jumps and upsetting the car and having crashes and all that stuff, which we do not want to have. Hope this helped you guys out. Really appreciate all of you guys. It feels great to be back in the competitive mode again. <sighs> More on that coming later. Peace.